order you would like. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we are back here on the big broadcast. We've got a tremendous, tremendous guest with us joining us via Skype. And uh, I'll tell you, he, he knows how to set up Skype, which is pretty badass because we have a lot of guests on this show. They don't, they don't do lighting. They, they don't have a cool background. They, 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 they often look like clods when they're on video. So I'm glad to see that we have a good, a good guy with us today. I'm going to go ahead and let him introduce himself. We'll talk a little bit about the website. We'll go from there. Go ahead and jump in there, my man. Thank you, Jiggy. My name is Herman SJR. I am a researcher for over 15 years and I research how the uh, illogical fallacies of society help to stifle growth. For example, I use a lot of sciences to prove such as quantum physics, resonance, obviously psychology, yeah. sociology, anthropology, logic, and a whole plethora of different sciences just to prove that the position that we're in right now is extraordinarily damaging to us as a global society. Yeah. With these atrocities occurring, such as, you know, religious atrocities, intolerances, racism, ageism, and anything you can possibly contemplate, including self limiting, debilitating uh, mental attitudes, such as, I can't do this, you know, it's not for me. Other people can do it, but yeah. I can't. There is a, a tremendous force behind society that is trying to keep it that way and it's just an inculcation that is cyclical and is doing a fine job of occurring generation after generation after generation and we're not escaping it so what i do is i try my darndest to present the evidence via the sciences not anything that's philosophical and say oh if we all just get together and stuff though that will work but i try to be more uh, present more evidence with a great amount of emphasis via the sciences to say we don't need to be this way. Quantum physics shows us that we are all linked together. We can accomplish this and that. So that's the long answer to your question. <laughs> I do for a great, uh, a great number of years here. Now, you have a website. Uh, let, let's talk about uh, the website itself uh, and, and what people can check out when they head over to the website. Yeah, go ahead and give us the website address, and uh, we'll direct our viewers and our listeners over there. Sure. The website address is www.herman, H-E-R-M-A-N, S as in Sam, J-R for junior, dot com, www.hermansjr.com. And the website is a portal of it for information of where we are, everything that I just said, where we are right now, how to use the sciences to, to really change your life, to change your belief system, and to know that it is not supposed to be this way. And more importantly, it can change on a global scale. We can you know, rid ourselves from these ridiculous prejudices, these ridiculous atrocities that are occurring for whatever reason, because of beliefs that have been handed down to us from generations and generations. You know, I'm a Christian, so, you know, yeah. this religion doesn't work. I'm a Muslim, so this religion doesn't work. And it's just all this, uh, you know, arrogance and, and negativity there. So the, the website is designed as a portal for information of interviews, articles, videos, for others to get there and to say, look, these sciences, this is the evidence. Quantum physics proves this. You know, resonance proves this. I can make it. I can do it. You know, there is a lot of positive energy that's out there in the universe, and you can tap into it. So it's very, I do it very carefully to not come across as a, and I don't mean this to sound in, in an insulting manner, but uh, I'm just a mystic or someone who's just completely out there. But I use the sciences to say, this is proven, we can do this. All these occurrences have happened. You know, Tony Robbins is a wonderful example. Dr. Alan, Fred Allen Wolf, the quantum physicist, is a wonderful example. I mean, even the movie The Secret is a wonderful example to get you going there. So that is where the, what the website is all about. I'm trying to do everything I can as a humanitarian to yeah. help people see that this is not how your life should be and could be, and you can change it, whoever you are, anywhere on the planet. 
Well, we've we've got the website up there on screen for our television viewers. Um, you've got a lot of information here. <laughs> How long did it take you to collect all of this? This is really cool. Well, it's one fifty right now, so. No, I'm kidding. It took me quite a few, <laughs> quite a few years. I've been in research for about about 18 years now. I am an autodidact, someone who learns constantly by themselves. Obviously, I have schooling. I'm, I'm going for my PhD as well. But I've always been a diehard true nerd in every sense of the definition. So I've been studying since I was child. Uh, a child, languages, you know, the sciences, everything I can possibly get my hand on. I've just, knowledge to me is the number one important thing in the world. So I've been collecting this information, studying religion, studying the mind of people, studying, uh, I have a heavy emphasis on deception and misdirection in all my research. As a matter of fact, if it doesn't involve misdirection and deception, I won't deal with it. Because I feel extremely firmly that in order to help people see how we can change how society is and how they can get a drastically better life and help them to perpetuate this feeling, you need to use misdirection and deception, not to, ha not to hurt them, but you know, to show them different manners of life, and, and I'll go into that later. But So I've collected all the information, finally I said, okay, I got to get all this information down. I have the articles, the book I authored last year, and then the videos, of course, trying to do everything I can to help people realize that you can do better and your family can do better, your children can do better. We just need to rid ourselves of these mindsets. It's like any problem that exists in the world at any point in any industry, it's just a matter of shifting your perspective. For example, I never ever have bad days, ever. I have good days with bad moments. <laughs> that's awesome. That's, that's, that's one thing. That's that awesome. The wonderful coach, Bob, Bob Proctor, a few years ago. And for example, let's say I get up today and I stub my toe. You know, I, I get into a car accident. I, you know, all these different things happen. I was late for work. I was fired from work, whatever it is. You can let that continue your world for that day and let it continue to perpetuate the negativity and your day is gone. Or you can take the worst day possible, and it's hard, I'm not saying it's easy. Yeah. You can take the worst day possible and say, I got fired, I stubbed my toe, you know, I got into an accident, whatever, whatever variables you want to use. And you can say, but at least I learned how to deal with it better, or at least I got that piece of mail from grandma and I, it was a, a reassuring letter or anything take one thing and just shift your perspective look at that entire day of problems in a different manner and you have a huge powerful tool to continue moving forward in a more positive sense than all those obstacles that were guiding you in a negative path for the future for that day We've got a great guest with us today. Uh, Herman, what, why should people buy your work and or follow your research? What kind of benefit do you offer them? I know we've been uh, discussing that a little bit here, but uh, break that down for me in more detail. Sure. The reason why I feel people should buy my book and should go into my research and follow my research, go to my website, is because... It, it doesn't take anyone with a high level of intelligence to realize that there's something wrong with this society. I mean, there are a lot of good things, of yeah. course. But there's a lot of things wrong with this society. And more importantly, more scaringly, is the where we're going in the future. I mean, so many people are disconnected now because of different reasons. Technology, the Internet, you know, our, our average number of friends, I believe, is down to 1.5 or 1.3 close friends. One before it was 2.5. So we're actually getting more uh, segregated from each other. It's a, it's a fine operation that is going on deliberately, for whatever reason, by whoever's yeah. doing it. Yeah. And we need to say, no, this is not right. There, are a, there is a huge number of people who are out there who don't have good lives, who don't feel that they're worth it, who don't feel that they can do it. And this is repugnant. It's astronomically baffling how we as a, a human being, as creators and creations, 
can accomplish so many different things. The potential that we have as humans is, is baffling. But yet we hold ourselves back. Oh, he can do it, but I can't. Hey, I just got this wonderful <laughs> job, but God, I hope I don't get fired in the next two weeks. You know, it's like everything you get, you have some kind of mental obstacle that says you can't do it, you can't do it. And then, of course, on top of that, you have the other people perpetuating, you know, ridiculous atrocities of racism, you know, kill all the Christians, kill all the Muslims, kill all the Baptists, whatever. And, you know, kill all the you know, white people, all black people, whoever it is. But you have all these different things that are going on. And if people just realize that quantum physics shows us that we are all unified as entities, we are all tied to each other. And all the different things that sages and new age people, whatever you want to call them, that spoke about in ancient times, shamans, we're now beginning to get the science to prove that, wait a minute, maybe they were right. You know, it, the only difference <laughs> is yeah. that now we're saying, oh God, <laughs> I guess they had something there because now we have the science because of one big reason is because of resonance, the science of resonance, my favorite science by far. And then also because of quantum physics, it is taking everything that we know of science and completely overturning it and showing us that we are all, all unified entities thought does create something to whatever degree. Uh, we do affect our reality. We don't all only affect our current reality, we affect our future, and if you can believe this, we affect our past as well. But that's a whole other conversation. So <laughs> these are the reasons that I feel that you, you will get a lot of benefit by reading the book, by reading the material, because it helps you to shift your perspective and just stand back and say, okay, I don't need this kind of life. I can get something that's drastically better. And more importantly, I can then go out after I'm successful to whatever degree and help others to do the same. And I know this is very idealistic yeah. because I'm a huge humanitarian. Just imagine if a small percentage of the global population of 6 billion people were to do that and perpetuate it and kind of like the movie pay it forward you know give it to others and help others and help others at some point eventually the world will look drastically different things will be much more positive and we can move forward as a much more unified entity that is a really cool way of looking at things uh how did you get to that level <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of thinking <laughs> No, as I said, I've, I've always been a proud nerd, very proud to say that I'm a nerd. <laughs> Even when I finish my PhD in some few years, you know, I'll definitely go for the doctor because I love education. But yes. to answer your question, how I came to that is just, you know, I, I've been very lucky in life. I've been always a, a weird character, someone who looks at <laughs> problems in a very unorthodox manner. I believe adamantly that you need to study problems from an interdisciplinary subjects aspect for example yes very much so okay you know what i'm speaking of yes, yes. you need to look at a problem not only from the aspect even in business not only from aspect of management but uh, employee yep. morale you know uh, physics arts the entertainment and then you'll have a drastically more solid solution to any problem that exists the world over in any industry so because I've been studying since I was a child all these different things, I, I never say no to knowledge. I was very fortunate in that I was able to that okay, this problem in quantum physics relates to this problem in linguistics that we're currently having. This problem in psychology relates to how you keep people on the job and motivated and want to perpetuate the company and their own life via finances and incentives and all that stuff. So I was able to to look at all these things, these problems in society and say, you know what, it, it shouldn't be like this. And all these different sciences, subjects, industries, whatever you want to call it, show us that if we do apply these other principles, which work drastically in those other areas, it will work without a doubt, I guarantee in these other areas. The only problem, the biggest problem right now is that we don't see it. 
we think that this is it because of those powers that are out there that perpetuate it forcefully to make sure that there's no change. So if we were to just step back and see that there is something we can do and all these sciences do prove it, the world will be on a course to possibly being drastically different. The first case, uh, the first thing we have to do is to first see it because of course with any problem, if you don't see the problem, you can't make the change. If you want to get more information on uh, the guest that we were talking to today, uh, Herman can be accessed over at hermansjr.com. That's hermansjr.com. He has a wealth of knowledge over on this website. I, I am looking at this uh, right now, and he has got a ton of different things going on over there. Um, I understand you have a book available. Uh, that uh, delves into all of this. Um, seeking Truth While Sifting Through a Global Practice. Uh, first of all, how the hell did you come up with the title of this book? <laughs> this, 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 this is definitely something that um, someone of, of your mental caliber would come up with. This is not something that uh, uh, some, some, some average idiot uh, and, and, and some, some of the – and I'll tell you, if you've, ever been, if you've ever heard this program or seen our television show, we have average idiots on this show. <laughs> I, am, I am very shocked that we have been able to get such a great – great guy like you on the program today. But let's talk about this book. How did this book come about? Well, it's funny that you mentioned the title because uh, some irony here, whenever I was growing up, as I said, I've been studying since I was a child, many different subjects. And yes. I always believed that any book with a huge title I thought was ridiculous. And I said to my friends, <laughs> why are they having this huge title? That's ridiculous. Just say the book of physics, whatever. You know, the, big, the book of Jiggy Jaguar, whatever. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no one would read that book, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you wrote it, they probably would. But <laughs> so the, the reason for the title is Seeking Truth While Sifting Through a Global Practice is – we are trying to seek the truth of logical fallacies, of incorrect beliefs that are held and held on strongly to within society. And one of the global practices is uh, listed in there. And it's basically saying why we believe, you know, all this stuff of religion, why we believe that, you know, Christianity is right, uh, Islam is right, and, you know, uh, Hinduism is right and all that stuff yes. and all of these different things so it's trying to seek out the truth but you have to sift out the real truth from that that's already proclaimed as truth yeah. for example if you study any religion you know any way of life they're going to have some kernels of truth but of course they're going to hide the other parts you know Jesus was really crucified well he really wasn't and, you know, uh, Muhammad was this when he really wasn't and, you know, all that stuff. So I won't go into it too much. But to answer your question, it's a way, it's a book that gives a way of looking at things differently to start perpetuating the idea, to give the impetus, the push for people to say, you know, maybe something's not right. I'm not sure, or maybe you are sure, but I'm not sure. But at least, if nothing else, it requires getting more information and more evidence. And that's the only thing that I really desire to do for people, to help that person that's going through life that believes that prayer is the answer when they're not doing anything and their life is falling apart because they're not moving forward. They don't believe in the potential power that they have as a person as a, a unit of creation, a human being, a spiritual being, a being of energy, and change their life around. So this book is just to give you a, however you want to term it, a magnifying glass or a new vision on a problem that's been with us for a tremendous amount of time. 
Well, if you're joining us uh, today, we are we are live as live can get. Uh, currently on the Starcom Television Network, we uh, we we were doing a, a pre-recorded interview here for our uh, t for our uh, radio program and our television program. But I, I had such a fun time speaking with our guests that we ended up running over into our live show, which uh, you will be able to hear the complete interview. Um, we're going to be broadcasting that uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but uh, I wanted to get Herman with us today. I wanted to catch everybody up who's listening to the live show. If you're watching us on television, you will see our um, you will see Herman's website, which is hermansjr.com. It is a, a tremendous piece of business, and he is joining us today uh, via the old Skype Rooney. And uh, let's talk a little bit here. Uh, we were talking a little bit about this earlier, but uh, I, I want to go back over this a little bit more in, in finer detail. Why must people look at societal problems such as religion and tolerances and other issues from the standpoint of uh, just just a I guess interdisciplinary studies is what you'd call it, um, quantum physics, uh, psychology, sociology, all these. Well, the reason why people must, without a doubt, look at certain problems from different vantage points, whatever that vantage point is, whether it's quantum yeah. physics, physics, resonance, whatever it is, is, uh, is, because, is to get a different perspective. Like I was saying earlier with you having a bad day, someone having yeah. a bad day stubbing your toe, all it takes in order for you to continue forward in a more positive, more effective manner is to just shift your perspective and say, you know what, this accident happened, I got fired, but this day is going to be good, I don't care. So you need to, it, one good example is consultancy. I do consultancy all over the world in different countries on different areas, typically in the realm of psychological business strategy. So one thing that you can think of is, uh, let's say if you have a business, uh, G, uh, and you have a business that you sell soda. Yeah. And you have some issue in your company. After you wear out all the options in your company, you're going to look at <laughs> and you're going to say, "Okay, we have an issue in marketing. We have an issue in whatever area, area X." And this consultancy corporation, they may know absolutely nothing about your product, selling soda, selling computers, whatever it is. But that doesn't matter. It matters that they're coming in from a different perspective. They're coming in with a new vision, a new set of glasses, magnifying glasses, whatever you want to say. So they will have a far greater chance of looking at the problem and saying, oh, well, if you were to do this, in our experience, this is a solid solution. And then you go back into the meeting and say, okay, well, with our industry, that would work better coupled with this solution. So you, in turn, create something that's far more powerful. So just think if you were to take another consultancy, another one, another one, and take all those different minds and merge them together into one solid, astronomically solid solution, you'll be a far greater business person. You'll be far more productive, more profitable, obviously. And this thing goes on every single day in the realm of consultancy. It's gone on even when uh, what was it, if I remember the story correctly, when Apple went to the vice president of Coca-Cola or Pepsi? Yes, yes. Okay, you remember, and took him on and said, do you want to make sugar water for the rest of your life or do you want to change the world? This executive that they got, the vice president of the Coca-Cola company or Pepsi, he had, you know, he's not in the business of computers, but he did have the expertise that they needed. So if you were to take problems of society such as racism, you know, bigotry, ageism, all these different things, religious intolerances, killings, and just look at it from a different perspective and say, well, we are all unified. We are not divided because I'm a Christian, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Hindu, whatever, because I'm white, I'm black, I'm green, I'm gray, whatever. <laughs> and, yes. and say, you know, we are all unified, we can accomplish things together. I mean, we have accomplished so much, so many tremendous things thus far with the internet, with cars, with reaching the moon, with sending satellites into the furthest. In, right now, we just sent out a satellite, I think it was 30 or 20 years ago, just 
a week ago or two weeks ago, it has reached the outside, uh, the outermost part of our galaxy. It took 20 or 30 years. So we're able to do that. So just imagine if we were able to be not divided, but unified as an entire global society. Yes. This is very idealistic, but just imagine the feats that we can do as a unified society, the ridiculous amounts of, of uh, honor yes. Yes. and honor killings that will be not only go down, but be non-existent because we are caring for each other. We are looking out for everybody. We've got a great guest with us today here on the line, and uh, we we wanted to, to get Herman on today. He has a, a great website. We have been uh, talking about this uh, most most of the interview here. If you're uh, watching us on television, uh, we've pulled that up for our uh, television viewers there. If you're listening to us on uh, Build, Grow, and Enjoy Radio, uh, you've you've been uh, you've been just uh, I'm sure fascinated by the by the work of this man and uh, all the research and things that he's done. If you're listening to us live as live can get today on the uh, Jiggy Jaguar Radio Network, uh, we will have this interview in full up very soon because you you've missed about a 15 to 20 minute conversation, which is absolutely fabulous. And um, let, let's talk a little bit about uh, how people can uh, buy your book and stay informed on your work besides the websites. Well, everything, I centralize everything in one location, which is the website. If you go to www.hermansjr.com, everything is going to be set there and always will be. So the book is obtainable there. If you're in the Chicago area, it is at certain bookstores as well, select bookstores, and all that information is on the website as well under the book page. It's called the book page. And uh, it is orderable online as well. All the information, all the articles that I write are always published there. So any interview that I have, any articles, any book, any ideas, uh, anything that I have with my research will always be located there. So it's just a one portal place, very easy to find me, very easy to get in touch. If you're looking to update yourself on my research, uh, purchase the book, which is going to be a huge help to your rethinking process, ideally. <laughs> and of course, if you're looking to conduct some research with myself, I'm not a solo research. I am opening, open to research with other people. Uh, as long as it's something that is very, uh, that involves a big problem in society and how yeah. we can change it for the betterment of ourselves and our other people as well. So the website is really some place that you want to go to to obtain all the information because I store everything over there. Well, it is it is an amazing piece of business. I'm glad we were able to have you on today and uh, for our friends on uh, Build, Grow, and Enjoy Radio. Uh, we want to thank everybody for tuning in to us today. We want to thank our good friends over there at the Idea Magazine for watching the uh, video and also our friends at Starcom Television. Um, our, our networks in the Jiggy Jaguar Radio Network, and that's uh, a plethora of stations, including uh, Talk Superstation, Talk Radio X, um, all of our good friends at Starcom Media. Uh, you've missed a heck of an interview, but we're going to be replaying it this next week on, on the program. Uh, I want to thank Herman for being with us today. And um, if you want to get more information, it's HermanSJR.com. And uh, the book is available over there as well. Any final thoughts, Herman, before we let you go, my man? And uh, yes, thank you. yes, thank yes, you. go. I definitely appreciate you having me on the show. Thank you very much. It was a wonderful conversation. I, I will leave you with this. I do want to say with these different problems that we have in society, it is a matter of just shifting your perspective. And if you were to obtain one piece of evidence, one piece of information that will help you do that, whatever it is, you're well on your way to getting a better life, whatever life you desire, and also helping to perpetuate that life to your loved ones, your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your children, all these different things. All it takes is getting your hands on information that is proven by the sciences that we can make it and all these different beliefs that are stifling our growth are perpetuated deliberately and my book and the research that I do accomplish all that. 
Well, Herman, uh, I appreciate you making time for us today. Thanks for being on and uh, looking forward to uh, chatting with you more over the next couple months or so. Come back anytime, my man. It's uh, It's been fun. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, JD. Definitely. Have yourself a wonderful day, sir. We'll talk soon. You too. Appreciate it, man. And uh, if you're listening to us on the radio, we are live as live can get over there on the Starcom Television Network as well. It is uh, definitely. <laughs> it was. It's. It's kind of been a. Uh, I guess a, 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 a psycho circus here, because we've 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 had to uh, we've had to do a whole bunch of uh, different things. We are going to run behind like crazy today, but it was worth it uh, to chat with Herman. We're gonna take.